welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda, but you may know me as Mando Bug, since that's what I go by on Ravelry and Instagram and Mando Bug Crafts on Facebook. I'd like to start out this show saying thank you to those of you that are returning viewers. I don't normally do that at the beginning of my videos just because I try to keep my intro short and sweet because my videos tend to be short so I don't want more than half of my video just to be an intro. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you to those of you that have liked my videos, subscribed to my channel, comment and you know, message me on Ravelry. I really appreciate you guys doing that and I enjoy chatting with you. Even though I may not say it every video, I do enjoy those things. And also, I would like to go ahead and say welcome to any new viewers. I don't say that every video either. Uh, maybe I'll extend my intros, but probably not. Like I said, I like to keep them short and sweet. Maybe just every once in a while, I'll give you guys a little thank you and a welcome. So, this video is a work in progress video. The very first work in progress I have to share is a sweater for my son Jack. This is Anders, a pay for pattern on Ravelry. I'm knitting it on US size 6 and 7s out of Malabrigo Arroyo in Fresco y Seco, the green, and Natural, the white. So I have knit, slipped the sleeves, knit down the body, and finished the color work chart. This is such a cute pattern. I absolutely love it. Although I do have to say it's turning out to be kind of large. This is the largest size in the pattern, 18 to 24 months, but it's kind of huge, right? Like, put up to my body. I mean, I can't fit into it, but to me this looks more of like a 4T, that, or maybe a 2T dress. Um, more than it does like 18, 24 months. I don't think this is going to fit Jack. I think it's going to be too large. I think Emily might be able to wear it as an oversized sweater this winter, and then maybe it will fit Jack next winter. There's nothing I can really do about how large it's turned out now. I mean, it's, I'd rather it turn out too big than too small, but I did take gauge and I thought I was meeting gauge, so I'm gonna have to double check my gauge again and my finished measurements after I block it to match the finished measurements of the pattern to see what went wrong here. I don't know why this is so big. To show you in comparison, um, I'll show you my next work in progress because it's Emily's sweater. This is Emily's sweater, so do you see the size difference? This is bound off for the body as well. So this is Flax by Tin Can Knits, which I also thought I was meeting gauge for in the two to four size. So. This is more what I expect for a two to four year old sweater. This looks like it's going to fit my daughter nicely. And it just is more of the size that I expect to see for a two to four. And that's 18 to 24 months. So I don't know, we'll see. So this is Flax by Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I've also knit down the body and bound off and just have the sleeves left to do just like on the Anders. The body is stockinette, and this is Dreaming Color Calm in Angel. And the sleeves have a garter stitch panel, and I modified the pattern so that the stitches picked up under the sleeves are also in the same garter stitch pattern. So this pattern is a really good beginner knit. It's a really good base for a sweater pattern that you would like to make modifications to because it is so plain and just has the garter design on the sleeves. And it's also available for free from sizes newborn to adult. So, I mean, this is, if, you're, if you don't know where to start with a sweater, I would start here. And I'm knitting it on US size 8. My next work in progress is something new. So I am subscribed to the Crochet Crowd on YouTube and a couple weeks ago I saw a video that they had posted about Karen cakes. So I don't know if you're familiar, because I wasn't until I'd seen the video, but this is a Karen cake or Karen cakes. It is a line of yarn from Karen that looks like this. So this particular yarn is in the Bumbleberry colorway and you can see that it is a self-striping 
kind of gradient yarn or ombre yarn. The tag says that it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool, and it's 7.1 ounces or 200 grams and approximately 383 yards. So it's definitely like an Aran bulky weight yarn. And I ended up grabbing myself this one and this one, which is in the cookies and cream colorway. So in the Crochet Crowd video, they kind of talked about like this crazy out of nowhere hype for the yarn that caused it to sell out in most Michael's stores and people were being ugly to Michael's and Karen about it not being in stock and they were just kind of asking everybody to please be nice and wait for it to get restocked. Um, but I decided to go to my local Michael's and find out if we had any and we did so I grabbed a skein of each and I've started crocheting with this one just to kind of see what the yarn feels like and what it works up as. If you're wondering, this, these skeins go for, or these cakes, I should say, these cakes, um, I bought mine for $7.99 a piece, so they're relatively inexpensive, and I think that may be why they got so popular, it's because it's the first time that this kind of self-striping yarn has really been in a big box craft store for so cheap. Us um, knitters and crocheters that use indie dyed yarn know that this, te this dyeing technique is not new, it's just not something you see really commercially produced. So, anyways, I kind of just making this, I just kind of made this pattern up on the fly. I chained like 40 something stitches and I'm doing two rows of half double crochet and then a back post half double crochet row. And I, that's what I'm doing as I go down. and the idea is that I'll keep going and I'll connect the tube and I'll have a nice cowl. Hopefully long enough I can wrap it around tw twice, but we'll see. Doing the back post half double crochets gives you this nice V pattern that you usually see when you do any sort of knitting, um, but you don't usually get it with crochet. So that's what I went ahead and did. and. So far, I like the way that it's turning up. Crochet tends to be a little bit holier than knitting, so since i knitting it in a tube, or crocheting it in a tube, it should be warmer than if it was just done flat. So I'm crocheting this with a K-hook, and it's nice and fat and quick. Uh, so one thing I wanted to show you was that you can't really tell the difference between this first color and the second color, maybe if I fold it over you might be able to see that this first color is more of a peachy beige and the second color is more of a yellowish grayish beige before you get into the actual gray. Um, one thing that I think is really nice about the way this yarn is dyed is it's not a very abrupt color change. You can see here where the, maybe if I go back a little bit, there we go. You can see here is where the color changes and it really just kind of fades into the next color. It's not an immediate thing. And I noticed as I was crocheting with the yarn that it did, the outside kind of blended over into the inside. So I thought that was really nice. And so I really like the way that this is dyed, but the yarn itself, um, it is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. The acrylic is soft. I think the, the acrylic content is softer than the wool content because there is a little bit of roughness to the yarn. Nothing that you wouldn't mind putting against your face. Like it's not that rough, but there is a little bit of roughness to it and I think that's the wool content and the acrylic content is pretty soft. Um, I wouldn't say the acrylic content is as nice as um, some of my favorite acrylic yarn, like Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn, and um, like I like Vanna's Choice as well. I don't think it's quite that soft, but it isn't like, it doesn't feel like an original Red Heart Super Saver yarn. So um, I am super curious to see how this yarn turns out when it's been blocked, so, but since it does have some wool properties. Um, I'm curious how this will behave. The wool content in here, I believe, is just 
straight wool and not super wash because the tag does say to hand wash and lay flat to dry. So that is something else that's interesting about the yarn. So the last work in progress I have is not really a project necessarily as much as it is an experiment. So I lost my Halloween socks. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever lost a project before. This is the first time I've ever lost a project. I, I have no idea where it is. I thought it was with where I keep all of my craft things. I kind of have, so I kind of have three spots here. I have where I sit in my chair. There's some bags down by the bottom. I have a corner in our den and I have some in the bottom of a closet. And it's not in any of those three places. I even checked like randomly my dresser. Maybe I put it in there and it's not in there. I know what project bag it's in. I just don't know where the bag is. So my Halloween socks will not be done on time and I miss those and I miss my chow goo needles that the socks are on. So since I'm kind of missing my Halloween socks, I decided to play around with the idea of crocheting some socks. So I started out as a crocheter and I became a knitter because I just wasn't completely happy with the fabric you get with crochet for certain things. Um, I do love crochet and I do know that there are ways to get the crochet fabric that you want, but crochet will never be knitting. It won't. Knitting is thinner, it's stretchier on average, right? Like obviously there are some crochet stitchers, stitches that aren't as thick as certain knit stitches, but in general a stockinette stitch will be thinner and drapier than single crochet stitch. So that being said, I really gravitated, gravitated towards learning to knit so that I could knit garments and stretchier things like socks. So I started a, I, I, start, I tried to start a sock. Now I know there are sock patterns on Ravelry, free and pay for, I looked at them, but I kind of want to come up with something myself instead of following a pattern and then not liking it. I'd rather start myself and rip back if I don't like it and try something else. I feel like I have enough experience knitting socks and enough experience crocheting that I shouldn't have an issue making a sock pattern that I like. So I started crocheting a toe and I just kind of looked at the shape of my toe and went from there. Well, this is too pointy and it does not stretch so it did not work out and it will be getting ripped out and redone. But um, this I used Dream and Color Smushy uh, in Humdrum and a US C, no, this is, an, this is a US 1 which is like a 1.8 or 9 millimeter hook. It's, it's, it's just slightly below two millimeter. I don't remember exactly, but this is way too dense and not giving and I don't like it. So I decided to skip the toe for now and move on to the cuff and well, the leg really. And I decided to play with some swatching, like treat it. I decided to treat it as a swatch and play with different stitches. So this is what I have. Um, just as like a possible leg. This is some of my leftover yarn that is Lou Cookie Yarns on her Cookie Toes base in Apples and Pumpkins and here is my swatch. So each section, every time I started something new, like if I changed the hook or if I changed the pattern, I did the very first row in the back loop only, so I got this nice ridge in between my sections. This very first section, I used a USC hook, and it's just single crochet stitch, and it ended up being too dense. You can see if I try to pull on it, there's really no give. And this is a foundation chain. I didn't do the foundation single crochet, I just did I chained like uh, somewhere around 50 stitches and it does not give at all. It feels like a really tight rope in there and I cannot get it around my heel. So I know when it does come time for me to crochet socks, I am going to be crocheting them from the toe up to avoid having this rigid beginning. 
So that's the first section. The second section I moved up to a USF hook and it is much more stretchier and squishier and I'm much more happier with the gauge with the F. So when it does come time to crochet a sock, I will probably be using an F. This section here is half double crochets and it's even stretchier, but as you can tell, as you stretch it out, it opens up some holes. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that yet. This section right here was to play with the idea of mimicking a knit and purl rib that you get with uh, knitting. In crochet, to mimic the appearance, it's the alternation of a front post and a back post. So on these rows, I did front post half double crochets and back post half double crochets. And while it mimics the appearance of a rib, it does not mimic the effect of a rib. This is very thick and it's not very stretchy. And so I don't really like the way that it acts. The way that it looks is nice, but I don't like the way that it acts. This section is just double crochets and it's the most stretchiest, but it also becomes the holiest, which you do not want holes in your socks, unless you were to put some like lace type things in there. This section I played with alternating half double crochet rows and back post half double crochet rows and you get this ridge in it which is nice but it's very three-dimensional it's very textural so I don't know how I don't think that would be very nice in a sock and then this last section here I just started is super adorable this is the star stitch if you've never crocheted a star stitch before I highly recommend checking it out. It's not a difficult stitch pattern and it's really, really pretty. And so far, it's stretchy enough that I think it could work in a sock. So I think that might be the pattern that I'm drawn to the most. But I'm gonna continue playing with some more stitch patterns and testing how stretchy they are and how holy they are and really just the kind of fabric that you get um, in a fingering weight gauge. Just because I've never really crocheted with fingering weight other than the hollow web shawl that I designed. So that is all of my works in progress. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys like me or would like to see more videos from me in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until next time guys, happy crafting. Bye!